Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab and today we're going to discuss about incident management process. This is a very important topic if you're preparing for the CISSP exam or other IC Square or ISACA, COPSIA, EC Council exams and all that. And along with that, this topic is highly asked in a interview jobs like JRC, SOC and all that. I received a lot of feedback, Prab, can you make a video on that? So I thought, let me make a video on this. Team, if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my similar kind of videos in the future. And my name is Prab Nair. For more information, you can refer my LinkedIn profile. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Hello everyone, my name is Prab Nair and I'm working as a Chief Instructor at InfoSec Training. So when we're talking about incident management process, so incident management process is basically divided into the four stages. They have a four stages. The first part or first stage is called as a preparation. The second part called as a detection and analysis. The third step or third stage is called as a containment, eradication and recovery. And the fourth stage or fourth step is called as a post incident activity. So these are the four steps we have or four stages we have. So when we're talking about incident management process, the ultimate goal of the incident management process is to reduce the impact. Always remember. But before going to understand the stages in detail, let's understand what is incident. So if you go by the definition, incident is any series of activity which impact the organization in a negative manner. That is called as an incident. And uh, every incident is an event, but not every event is an incident. Let me explain you. Let me understand the thin difference between the event and incident. I have a session. I have to start a session by 6.30. And I, I trigger an app and app open, initiate it at 6.30 and we start a session by 6.30, which is basically run as per the business objective. That is an event. But app doesn't trigger till 6.30, trigger by 6.40, I fail to continue, it impact my CIA, then it become an incident because here we breach the SLA. That is the thin line difference, event and incident. You are attending, uh, so your parents make you full makeup, shake up, you make you ready to attend one marriage event. You're going with this impression, you are attending one marriage event. And later on, you got to know your marriage got fixed in that event. Then it has become an incident for you. Now you understand, so every incident is an event, but not every event is an incident. So let's start with the first part, which is basically called as a stage one preparation. In a stage one, the first step is called as a policy. Any kind of a system you are introducing in the organization, any kind of a system you are introducing in the organization. Okay, you need a policy for that. Okay, policy basically help me to establish the governance. Policy talk about the scoping, policy basically talk about the structure, policy basically talk about the uh, responsibility matrix, policy talk about the authority and all that. So it is created by the information security manager, which talk about why we need an incident management system in the organization. And it is basically approved by the senior management. So once we have a policy in place, the second thing what we do is we create a team. We form the team, which is called as a CSIRT team, Centralized Security Incident Response Team. After having an incident response team, we'll basically uh, develop the plan because it is very important to have a plan. It is very important to have a procedure in place. So example, like I am the incident management lead and I am the one who created a plan. Now I am basically having an off. In my absence, if any incident happen according to the plan, how to respond to the incident, it will be easy. That is why we need to have a good detailed plan and their associate procedures. Once you have a plan, then you basically based on that, you procure the tools. Like we have a threat intel, we have a SIM, we have IDS, we have antivirus, because these are the solutions we have, which give the indication of an incident. Along with that, one more thing, what you need to consider, is called as a train your employees okay by the security awareness trainings because they are considered as a first layer of indication of incident and last layer of defense so we train them about what is security why security is important what is their responsibility toward the organization okay and how you measure the awareness training is 
like example like before awareness training the people reported 70 incident but after awareness training people reported 150 incidents that shows the good indicator of the security awareness training because now people are much aware about okay this is the incident this is the symptom this is the symptoms and all that that is a different story when they report an incident it is not necessary it's a true incident but it is a good they have reported so a good success factor of awareness training is increase in a incident report and decrease in a security violation okay increase in a incident report and decrease in a security violation so that is something we done in the preparation stage second stage is called as a detection and analysis so here one of the user has reported me a virus there is a virus in my system there was an attack there was a breach in my system so he have reported me as i said it is not necessary whatever he report it is true it can be false positive also so in order to confirm and validate i will call i will ask some details and after that i will start initiating a documentation documentation is a very important part of the incident management process because it is help me to build the governance so once you have a documentation you will prioritize the incident because you receive multiple ticket it is not possible for you as a human being to report all the incident or manage all the incident respond to all the incidents so you will do the one factor here which is called as a urgency and impact same like during a covid time when we have a mass patients in the hospital it is difficult for the doctor to handle each and every patient on a individual level so what they did they did the urgency impact analysis and identify which patient is critical and according to that they have treat the patient same thing happen here also we have a multiple tickets it is very difficult for us to manage the ticket so what we did is we prioritize and we check the urgency impact like which is which incident is basically urgent which required the urgent treatment if i don't treat them what is the impact so that is how we basically did the impact prioritization and according to that we have notified the respective owners now example like this is a security breach and as per the regulatory requirement we need to report the breach to the government in 72 hours like in gdpr we have a reporting breach is 72 hours in india we have a 6 hours so we have to report this breach according to this timeline so this activity is part of a detection and analysis now next is called as a containment the stage 3 which is called as a containment eradication and recovery containment is all about limiting the impact eradication is all about removing a threat from a system and recovery is restore the system back to the production so when we talking about containment eradication recovery the first part we are doing is we are reporting detailed reporting we are doing we preparing a containment strategy how to containment the virus example system was infected with the virus we know that we confirm that isolate a system from the network that is my first priority isolate a system from the network that is my first priority that is the first thing we do in a part of a containment same like you know when we have found some covid symptoms and all that we isolate the person immediately from the family right the same thing happen here so system was infected with the virus the system is hacked better is isolate a system from the network that is a temporary best solution then we try to remove all the threat from a system like if the system was infected with the virus remove the virus from the system okay then we did do the detailed reporting and notify my senior manager or manager because sometime what happened restoring a system removing something installing something required a lot of cost if you required budgetary approval you will notify and because sometimes what happens when you isolate it impact the availability so we need to see the business impact analysis so we'll review the bia to understand which business is critical is the process which is running on this it is critical or not and according to that we perform the recovery whereby restore the system back to the production here one thing we need to notice is when we are restoring a system back to the production we have to restore within a defined mtd rto and rpo and as per the sla so now i'm assuming the system was restored as per the bia there is no breach of SLA. Now let me learn how this happened. What is the reason of this is event? Why this happened? How this happened? This is called as a problem management process, which we are doing in a fourth stage, which is called as a post incident activity. Now thin line difference between the problem management and incident management is incident management ultimate goal is reduce the impact and problem management ultimate goal is to track the root cause. Okay, so that is the difference we have between the problem management and incident management. So in the problem management, we're doing a RCA, root cause analysis, where we identify why this happened. Example, system was infected with the virus. So we're identifying how this virus happened. What is the reason of this attack? Why this was successful? What are the parameters from which it was penetrated into the network? So that is what the RCA we're doing. Just to make sure this incident should not happen again in the future to avoid the repetition. And then finally, we'll document what we have learned from this particular entire event or incident. 
and if we find any kind of a gaps in our procedure we update the gaps according to the change management process so summary is that first step is preparation second is detection and analysis the third step is basically containment eradication recovery and fourth step is called as a post incident activity so if you find this video useful if you find this video informative do share in the network and do let me know in the comment box what is the next video shall i make because i am making more interactive videos in 2023 okay and if you still not subscribe to my channel do subscribe to my youtube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic this is all from your my side thank you for watching my video good day